Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 13 through to 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. His words remind us to keep moving forward in our Christian journey. Just like Apostle, Paul's message, our life is a journey too, from the day we are born until the day we die. Every person we meet and every experience we have, good or bad, is part of this journey. If we live our life on purpose, we can make the most of this journey. The sooner we realize this, the better off we will be. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 17 through to 26 says, So I hated life because the work that is done under the sun was grievous to me. All of it is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I hated all the things I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish. Yet they will have control over all the fruit of my toil into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For a person may labor with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and then they must leave all they own to another who has not toiled for it. This too is meaningless and a great misfortune. What do people get for all the toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? All their days their work is grief and pain. Even at night their minds do not rest. This too is meaningless. A person can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their own toil. This too, I see, is from the hand of God, for without Him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness, but to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. This Bible passage shares wisdom about life, work, relationships, and death. It talks about how everything we work hard for will be left to someone else when we die, which can seem meaningless. But it also reminds us to enjoy simple things like food, drink, and our work. This wisdom, happiness, and the ability to enjoy life are gifts from God. Even though life can feel like chasing the wind sometimes, it's important to focus on the things that truly matter. This is similar to what Paul taught us in his message. Beloved, it is enough that life can happen to you in one way or the other. You must make it a commitment to determine how those happenings affect you. Let me ask you this. Do you know how to be happy? Can we say you are a happy person? It is easy to go to church putting the fake smile on, a nice makeup, say the nice church words, and then go back home unhappy and bitter about life, angry with God and disappointed in your very existence itself. You can take a good headshot with a nice smile at a good location. Share on social media to get some likes and good comments. But on the inside, you hate yourself, life, and everything in it. Haven't we all read or heard about those tragic stories? Some of the individuals involved appear to be the happiest people in the eyes of everyone else. They were outstanding mothers, fathers, 
colleagues, friends, and siblings. Yet, their suicide notes told a different tale. They spoke of trauma, bitterness, fear, loneliness, and shame, among many other heartbreaking emotions. Let me also add that depression, sadness, and other negative aspects of life do not only affect those who are unsafe or unprotected, no, they can also affect believers. Notable figures such as David, Moses, Elijah, and even Jesus Christ had moments in their lives when they experienced a heaviness of heart. For instance, Jesus felt this when his cousin and forerunner John the Baptist was beheaded by the king. At the time, when Jesus heard the news, the Bible said he went away by himself. He probably needed the space to deal with the grief and then move on. What about when one of his best friends, Lazarus, died from sickness? When Jesus got to the gravesite, seeing everyone, including the deceased sister crying, the Bible said Jesus wept. The prophet Elijah reached a point in his own life where he told God to take his life because he was better off dead than alive. He was busy doing God's work, trying to turn the hearts of his people back to God, but they kept on following idols. The prophet of God had become the bad guy in the picture, and his life was in danger from the Queen Jezebel. Here, what he told God in the book of 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 3 through 4. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. So while you talk about the exploits of this great servant of God, remember, he battled depression too. This stark revelation prompts us to appreciate that no one, no matter how high in God's service, is immune from life's battles. But in the face of these trials, we are reminded of the ability to persist and stay resilient, drawing inspiration from Elijah's story. But his story did not end in despair. Through Elijah's testing times, God proved his faithfulness. It's essential to remember that God revealed to Elijah that he was not alone in his faith. In Israel, there were still thousands who were faithful to God and had not bowed to Bar. This disclosure was a turning point for Elijah, a balm for his tormented soul and assurance that his endeavors were not in vain. This story is more than just an account of an ancient prophet. No, it is a timeless reminder of our own lives. We all face our own battles, moments of despair, feelings of loneliness, but just as Elijah discovered, we are not alone. We can find confidence and strength in knowing that others are also faithfully going through their own journey too. Even in our unsure moments, God's light shines revealing a path forward, reminding us that we're part of a larger community, a divine plan, and our efforts, however insignificant they may seem, still matter to Him. Hear me, dear child of God. You might not be able to do so much about the things that happen to you, but you can for sure do something about how they affect your joy and peace of mind. How do you enjoy your life's journey? How do you truly live? Even when it seems you have yet to achieve some of your life's goals, when it feels like you haven't done so much in your life. 
The Bible tells us how in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 12 through 13. It says, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. But each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. The ability to find happiness in the simple things of life while thanking God is a gift in itself. I don't mean the act of living just about any how we want. Partying, getting drunk, dishonoring God with our bodies because we want to feel happy and forget our sorrows. No. Instead, I'm talking about the steady delight in the creation of God seeing the bright side of life, appreciating the priceless gifts of family, the blessings of life, a place called home. In fact, that you have a job, friends, and so on. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Listen. True peace doesn't come from having a lot of money or things. No, instead, it's found in appreciating the simple things we experience every day. When we take the time to notice and be thankful for these little blessings, we find real joy and satisfaction. Saying thank you for these gifts makes us grateful. This gratitude helps us understand what God wants for us through Jesus Christ. It makes us feel content and appreciative, which makes us feed things in a positive and uplifting way. Being happy isn't about chasing big goals or owning lots of things. It's about being content with the simple things in life and being deeply thankful for them. When we live this way, we show respect to God. We live out what Paul taught us, and we stand strong in our faith, just like the other believers that God showed to Elijah. Research has shown that people who find happiness in simple things are less likely to have challenges in their physical and mental health than those who don't. It also shows that you are more likely to affect others positively. Developing stronger empathy and ability to support those in need than people who are indifferent about life. You can be a child of God and still be bitter and unhappy if you don't make a choice to be otherwise. I have met believers who look like they needed light in their own lives. They knew God and loved to serve Him but they had no spark in their eyes. They hardly laughed, played with anyone, or enjoyed the creation around them. You see, you can't give what you do not have. Can such a person tell you about the joy of the Lord? Can such a person quote Psalms chapter 68 verse 3, which says, But let the righteous be glad, let them rejoice before God. Yeah, let them exceedingly rejoice. You would probably not take them seriously when they talk about these things because it seems they don't have it. It is true that happiness is not joy and it depends on happenings in our lives. However, happiness is a must in our life just as joy is a part of who we are in Christ. Happiness is about choosing to feel good about what's going on around us. This can be hard to do when things aren't going well. But even when times are tough, if we let God's joy fill our hearts, it can help us feel happy. This happiness can help us see the good things in our lives instead of only seeing the bad. It's a bit like looking at a painting. If you only focus on the dark colors, the painting might seem gloomy and sad. 
But if you also notice the bright colors, the picture can start to look happier and more balanced. The same goes for life. If we only pay attention to our problems, life can feel hard and sad. But if we also notice the good things like the love of our family, the beauty of nature, or the joy of doing something we love, life can start to feel happier even when times are tough. This is the power of choosing happiness and it is available to all of us if we only decide to embrace it. When Lazarus died and Jesus received the message, he said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. John chapter 11 verse 4 This statement embodies trust in God. Giving thanks can be difficult when you're consumed by sadness. However, if you let God's joy loosen your heart, it will help you appreciate the simple things. One time, a friend told me a story about a woman who had a tough day at work. Afterward, she went to the beach alone. She was upset because she worked very hard but didn't make a lot of money. She was also sad because her coat was old and she couldn't afford to buy a new one. While she was sitting there feeling sorry for herself, she saw a woman walk by who didn't have a coat at all, even though it was really cold. This made her think. Then she saw a kid playing in the sand. The kid didn't have hands and used special tools to help them, but they were still having fun and looked really happy. Seeing this made the woman cry. She asked God to forgive her for being upset about her own life, when she really had a lot to be thankful for. This story doesn't mean to say that people with disabilities or people who need things are less than others. It just reminds us that no matter how tough things are, we should always remember to be thankful because things could be even tougher. Be grateful because you've got God and He's got you. Be grateful that you are alive. A person that trusts in God and believes in Him will always be in God's good grace. Unlike the person who doesn't, and goes against his teachings. Hence, if you are his child, you don't have to worry about what will come or not come. You don't have to allow worry, bitterness, or sadness cause you to lose sight of the beauty around you. Take a walk to the beach or sightseeing, visit with friends, volunteer for the helpless, put smiles in other people's faces, Sing and celebrate when you have the chance to do so. Make a time to be happy. Don't work your life out and miss the best moments. Remember the words of Ecclesiastes. Find joy in your work and thank God for the honor of being His child. Be grateful for your health, your kids, your partner, for the things you have and the things you're yet to receive. This attitude puts a special sparkle in your eyes and affects everyone around you. It soothes your heart more than anything else could. Such an attitude fills your life with purpose. You'd realize that you spent your time well doing meaningful things with people who matter, making a difference as you journey through life. Remember, it's not about the material things you acquire, but the joy you find, the gratitude you express, and the positive impact you make. This is the true essence of living. A life filled with thankfulness, a life that truly counts. So, no matter the circumstances, let's always choose to be grateful.
because a heart filled with gratitude is a heart full of happiness.